which is to say that you are dealing with an eternal force of a comprehensible dimension. There's also a personal touch from this Shiva spirit. For the reasons I explained, that there is an, a natural patronage between Shiva and the human race at this time. And most especially people that are dealing with science of identity and methods of yoga, sudden revelation, he is that. The nature of Shiva is the reflex of empty or nothing. There's no occurrence. The expression, remember he's the to give you a, a reason why that happens is his deepest nature is absolute emptiness. Even his expressed nature is the nature of dreamless sleep, which the, is the thought of no thing. So his very essence is nothing. But he arises out of empty, as empty as nothing. That guna which is his province, which is the basis of the creation, is the primordial. All things arise from nothing and go back into nothing. There is a consciousness, an intensity of consciousness most especially in the center, because this is a center driven by the self and the methods of yoga and sudden revelation. He does not appear as something outside of oneself, but he appears out of the center of the deepest Shashumna. Shashumna is a very complex, field of attention. A lot of people, I think you imagine it's kind of a pipe or a shaft through which consciousness moves. But it's actually if you're to think, think pictorially, shaft within shaft within shaft within shaft within shaft, ever more subtle. Now, the quality of the main purpose of Shashumna is the storehouse of your existence. Your consciousness is the Shashumna. The Shashumna is the outermost expression of its purest nature and is the storehouse of the mind essence of all you are. That is the path. That is the path. That is the path. The experience of Shiva arises from the innermost, subtlest nature of Shashuna and, and appears as empty or nothing, displacing <coughs> the stored impressions of countless incarnations that exists in some scaric impression inside Shashumna. The arising of that kind of grace is very profound. The, because he is a renunciant by nature, and emotion is the reflex of desire that protects the placement of the small self, ego-driven I. It is not illogical that the first darshan of, of, the, of that spirit would stir up a lot of emotion 
because the whole idea of desire is removed in an instant and only the shell of emotion which is what's holding it holding the desire reflex small I identity in place there's a funny thing that happens when you first start doing sadhana and this kind of level where you're dealing with a definite force an evolutionary an involutionary force which are all reflexes of the great being the self god that whichever term this pantheistic view is helpful in he in keeping straight uh, the immense variety of the qualities of arising that take place in the absolute. But they are all, of course, unified. In that infinite variety, the way human beings are in their given condition now, it is their, their best bet to the condition of confused, conditioned soul to union with the self is through the path of Shiva, who is the mate to the reflex of time, Kali. This is the Kali Yuga, and so they're drawn in this particular world that we're presently occupying, which is to say that there are certain conditions of time and space affecting us. which is why Shaktipat is given so quickly now. Um, one of the first darshans often in the Shiva is a sense of being suspended in deep midnight black conscious consciousness. Just absolute nothingness, just suspended awareness oceanic and it emerges from within in most almost every case from a space deeper than consciousness or deeper than you are aware of the splash of emotions is the that immovable force because it doesn't seek any other objectivity it's the Shiva reflex destroys the subjective identity objective identity spontaneously it doesn't no, the subjective and objective identity does not survive the contact with Shiva it absorbs both so the emotions come from a variety of places first and foremost and to put it simply it is one of the it's a basic level of purification, the purification that must occur if the mind is going to finally calm down because it is the emotion that drives the mind to thought. They are the igniters of thought. Thought does not occur if emotions are held in, are in equipoise. The, mo the movement of mind through emotion generates the, the qualities of thought and thought It easily absorbs the overall conditioning of emotion. In other words, if you are thinking about something that you think about a lot and your mood changes, going from you're in a pretty good mood to you're in a bad mood, but just say you're just thinking about your job, which is basically a thought-driven process, the job hasn't changed, your mood has changed, and your emotions have changed. And when you're in a cheerful mood, you enjoy doing your job. It's your work, it's what you know how to do. And you, have, you enjoy the experience of doing your work because it's your dharma and whatever happens. But if your emotions change and your mood changes and you get into a bad mood, the same work, which has not changed in, by nature, becomes a very unpleasant experience. 